Hello, welcome to my kind book review video. Um, slowly catching up with the, the videos on behind. Today I will be reviewing the books that were released on the 12th of September 2012. Um, we start off, and where better to start off than the big headline grabbing blockbuster book of the week, and that is Avengers vs X Men Round 11, written by Brian Bendis, art by Olivier Capel. And I am so pleased Capel's back on art. Nothing against, you know, Qbert or Romero Jun well, Jr., who did the first books. But I just love Kapow's art. That whole sunrise scene there is just gorgeous. Um, you know, and there, that big double page spread there. Oh, and this, this picture with loads of action going on uh, is all good. Yep, so the story we have Cyclops and Emma are still possessing the Phoenix Force and it's slowly corrupting them and descending them into darkness. <coughs> it kind of amplifies all your negative emotions, um, kind of like in Star Wars, the Sith. You know, when they they access the the, the dark side of the Force, it hyper you know amplifies all those negative emotions, and, and that's exactly the same in this with the Phoenix Force. Um, the Avengers recruit the Hulk. They team up with the X Men, and they're all going to go and stop Cyclops and Emma because they're just going too far and getting too powerful. So they're going to stop them. Uh, Xavier during the battle gets into Cyclops' head and he, he's trying to talk him down and trying to tell him, look, I've got to stop you, I don't want to, but I've got to do this. And you get very much the sense of this father-son relationship between the two, but at the same time Cyclops has been com so corrupted that he can't see, you know, that harm that he's done and he's doing and could do. Um, there is a big death in this issue, uh, which I'm not going to spoil. Um, some of you may have seen it already if you've not read this book because it was in the newspaper and it was over the internet. Uh, but, you know, and Marvel do say, they have said in interviews, that this death is going to stick, that this character is not going to come back. Which I hope they do that because I think when you have that happen too often, it diminishes the importance of a death. If you have characters keep coming back, you know, a death should at least stand for a while. That's one thing where I've been impressed with Jean Grey that so far they haven't brought her back. You know, and though she was a popular character, I think it adds more impact when, when they're gone for good. Um, so yes, so there is a death in this issue. There's a big, you know, a big twist and a big cliffhanger. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, issue 12 and how this all resolves. I think it's really picking up momentum and this was a really good issue. It is very much mainly a big fight scene. Though the, the back and forth between Xavier and Cyclops adds a bit of gravity to it and, and a bit of context. But essentially, it is just one big slab and like a smackdown. Um, but then you buy a book called Avengers vs X Men. You don't buy it because you want to see them sitting around a table talking out their problems. No, you want to see them fighting it out, and that's what you get delivered in this. And Olivier Capel's art is just gorgeous. Um, also, one thing, another thing I want to say is that there were some books in the Marvel Now collection I weren't really that sure about. But after reading this, I'm really looking forward to them because I want to see the repercussions. I want to see the fallout from this. So, um, so that, that, that it's building up that nicely as well. And I'm looking forward to the next issue, see how it all resolves. And I give Avenger vs X-Men. Thumbs up. <coughs> next up, we have Batgirl, issue zero. Written by Gal Simone. Art by Ed Jenez. Uh, Benes, sorry. Um, this was good, I enjoyed this, a really good origin story, we get to see how Barbara became Batgirl and it's very organic, it's very natural the way it happens uh, we also have a nice bit of foreshadowing with James Gordon Jr of, of how the psychopath he will become um, and we get to learn a bit more about her early years as Batgirl and, and the book sort of ends with the scene with the Joker where she gets shot so that, that's how the book ends, um, I think it's a perfect complement to issue one you read this and then you read issue one, it would be brilliant, it would be perfect. <coughs> and and yeah, I, I'm just really loving this book. Um, I think Gail Simone does a fantastic job with this character. A character that I, I'd never read before, but I'm a absolutely loving her. It's one of my favourite female characters in comics. And, you know, yeah, long may Gail Simone's run on this book continue. And I give it a thumbs up. Next up, we have Exo Man of War, issue five. Um, Eric is on Earth now. He, <coughs> but the Vine, they want their armor back, the Man of War armor back. So they get the agents on Earth to try and get it back. Eric realizes he's out of time; that he's 
1,600 years out of time and all the people he knows are dead so he goes to be alone but the agents of the vine sort of follow him to try and get the armor back and when that doesn't work they hire Ninjak to go and get the armor back so you know another really strong issue I can't recommend this book highly enough it is fantastic um, I didn't expect him to be back on earth this soon but the story is really pushing on and it's really really doing good really going well um, and if, if you've never read this book before pick it up they have this fantastic inside the front page telling you everything that's happened in the first four issues um, really detailed so you would understand everything and you'd be totally up to speed with the book uh, but yeah I really enjoyed this issue as I've enjoyed all of them uh, it's written by uh, Robert Vendili, art by Lee Garbutt and the art is good you know um, yeah this is the scene where we get introduced to Ninjak uh, and here we get a little bit of, of um, XL Man of War in action uh, but yeah it's just a really good issue really strong book and you know if, you, if you're a bit fed up with Marvel and DC and you want to try something new but you still like your superhero books give Valiant a try they're putting out some really good books and XL Man of War is their best and I give it a thumbs up Next up we have X-Men Legacy issue 273 written by Christos Gage, art by Rafa Sandoval uh, This is the conclusion of this whole story of Rogue and this alien planet She, um, these two races, the Swarm and the Vi uh, the Ray, I think they're called and they're gonna go to war but what they don't know is the war is kept going by the King and the Queen, the King of the Vi, the Queen of the Swarm they, they have this pact and they keep the war going because it kills people off so there's enough resources then for the remainder because the resources on this world are dwindling so Rogue's going to expose this light, expose the reason why they're fighting this war and try and bring peace between the two races um, so that's Rogue's task in this issue um, it's really good, really good conclusion I've really enjoyed this book since I've been picking it up uh, I'm sad that they're going to they're going to relaunch it and it's going to be different people in the book as well as writing the book and I just hope Christos Gage does get something because I, I mean, if this is an example of his writing I've really enjoyed it uh, and the art, art's really good too we get some you know really good dynamic scenes um, but yeah I'm just really enjoying this book and I've got to say I love that cover that's got to be my cover of the week really good, gorgeous cover but yeah I give X-Men Legacy issue 273 a thumbs up Next up we have Green Lantern Corps issue 0 written by Peter Tomasi with art by Fernando Pascarin. Um I haven't read this since issue 1 so um, you know but I thought I'd pick it up because I was really interested to see the origin of Guy Gardner. Uh, I don't know what his original origin was but his origin is really good. Uh, we get to meet his family. I don't know because I haven't been buying a book if we've been seeing the family in the book anyway but I really like the scenes with his family and it really brought Guy home more because like, Guy can be a pretty difficult character because outwardly he's very loud and very arrogant but inwardly he, he's a good guy and he cares and he's a hero but you, you have to get past that arrogance and that loudmouth and I think the way Peter Tomasi writes this book you get to see that you get to see his loudmouthedness and his arrogance but you also get to see that other side, that caring side, that side that makes him a hero that he'll do what he has to do to save the day and uh, it's really nice seeing how he gets his ring and or even seeing the origin of how he gets the jacket um, is really good as well um, the one thing that I, I would gripe about is we don't really get any explanation into why they needed two lanterns of earth uh, which you know I would have liked maybe a bit of background into that but apart from that you know that's a minor niggle uh, the book on its own is brilliant uh, the relationship really between Guy and his father I think a lot of people would would empathise with that, you know. Um, the art I really enjoyed as well. I've not heard of this artist, Pascarin, but um, you know, it, it was really good, and I enjoyed this book. I thought it was really, really good, and yeah, I'd give it a thumbs up, you know. I um, I don't know if I'd go back to picking up the series, but certainly as a one-off issue, I enjoyed this thumbs up. Next up Incredible Hulk issue 13 um, two issues away from finishing uh, written by Jason Aaron, art by Jeff T. Palo uh, this starts a new storyline Hulk United and we kick off by finding out what Bruce Banner has been up to um, 
we only have seen the last few stories through the perspective of the Hulk. This issue we get to see the times he, he blacked out and reverted back to Banner, what Banner's been up to and what his overall plan is. So, you know, this issue is really, really interesting, really brings it all home. I thought it was a really strong issue, though I've loved what um, Jason Aaron's been doing. I really enjoy his work as a writer, and I've loved what he's been doing on the Hulk, even though he hasn't, you know, gone over. The art, I wasn't too, uh, the style, I really enjoy the story, I wasn't too enamoured with the art. I just don't know. Um, you know, the, the, uh, there was a lot of square jaws in this book, and it just wasn't, you know, the art that I like. Uh, but the story was top notch, and you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this run finishes before um, Mark Wade comes on with the Indestructible Hulk. Uh, but yeah, but I'd give this book a, a thumbs up. Next up, we have He Man and the Masters of the Universe, issue two of six. Um, we've got a change in writer this issue with um, Keith Griffin coming onto art. It also looks like we're going to lose Philip Tan on art as it, I would pour it. Uh, all of them are, are on the cover though because I think this book was already done. Um, I feel a bit sorry for Griffin because it's a difficult position to be in. He sort of takes over the book. So what, what does he do? Does he stick with the story that's been started or does he try and change the story to the story he wants to tell? Because you're sort of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, I don't understand why after one issue DC changed the writer. Um, Nothing's ever been really explained or any statement made why. Um, you know, I, I you know, I don't know. Maybe they've moved James Robertson up to something else. Maybe he didn't have the time to work on this book and has to be moved. I don't know. But, you know, it's something I would like to know. Um, but anyway, this book, this issue, I thought was a lot better than the first issue. I really enjoyed this. Um, Skeletor told all of his henchmen that they need to capture Adam. Uh, he has no memory of being He-Man. Uh, but he knows his life was something more than it is. So he's going through the desert. He gets captured by Trapjaw's people. Trapjaw then is going to kill him. Um, and it ends up with him battling um, Adam. Adam suddenly finds he can use a sword. Which he doesn't understand how he knows how to use that. And another character sort of turns up as well. Um, the art in this book I liked. The, the first couple of pages. These pages are done by Howard Porter, which I didn't, I wasn't as keen upon. Um, the rest, a lot, most of the rest of the book is done by um, Philip Tan, who I really liked his interpretation of many of the characters. Um, especially like, you know, in this issue we get to see Trapjaw, which it's nice to see his interpretation of Trapjaw. And he says loyal to the original, but it modernizes and, and, and changes it a bit. But hey, um, I'm looking forward to see where this book goes. I really love the end of the book. I thought there was a really good cliffhanger at the end, or uh, not cliffhanger, kind of like a twist at the end. Uh, but yeah, I really love this book, um, and I'm hoping that it'll continue to pick up like this uh, and continue to be strong. And I give it a thumbs up. Next up, we have a Batman. My, and this is my pick of the week. Um, I wasn't expecting that much from this book because. I thought, well, yeah, we know Batman's origin, you know, what What more do I need to know? You know, his parents were killed in Crime Alley, he, you know, he, he, he grew up, he travelled the world, he became, came back to Gotham to be a vigilante, he took the symbol of the bat to instill fear into the criminals, and then he became Batman, he became Batman. What more do I need to know? But uh, Snyder does a fantastic job with this, and Greg Capullo on art. Uh, we are introduced, this is six years ago, we're introduced to the Red Hood Gang. They're robbing a bank. And um, Bruce Wayne is disguised as one of the members, but they realise it isn't their member. So they try, he manages to get out of there barely with his life. And he's not yet Batman, but he's been a vigilante. And he gets a visit from Commissioner Gordon, and we get to see their first meeting. <coughs> and then it kind of ends and says, to be continued in 2013. Um, which some people would be disappointed about. Um, I, I enjoyed the story more than I thought I was gonna. Um, and the, and I've got a kooky theory. You see, in the original DC history, the reason Jason Todd took the Red Hood moniker was because the Joker had used it as an identity in the past. The Joker had been the Red Hood, and that's why Robin, the, the second Robin, Jason Todd, took it on um, to sort of... because it was the Joker. So, I'm thinking... 
right the big story that's coming up next is death of the family and in that story we've got the jokers return for the first time for the first time since issue one of detective comics we get to see the joker in the new 52 now if it usually they have these stories they'll usually run about six issues um, court of owls was a longer story but usually they'll run at least six issues to go into a trade so the story begins in october so we have october november december and we have January, February, March. So the story will finish in 2013, in March, if it's a six-issue story. The reason I'm going through all this is I believe that what we saw here was the origins of the Joker. I believe the leader of the Red Hood gang, that guy there with the funny hood, with the shorter helmet, I reckon he's the Joker, or he's the guy who will become who will become the Joker. That he's the leader of the Red Hood gang. In this issue, he seems a bit psychotic. He they they get go into this bank and they've already poisoned the cake so everybody's dead you know so when they get there to this, this new safe and it's like that's the kind of thing the joker would do you know and just the way the guy behaves and the way the guy is it reminds me of the joker and I'm, so that's my kooky theory that the leader of the redwood gang is the joker and that's how the story is going to continue into 2013 because we're going to get kind of like a flashback to somehow maybe batman was involved in, in him becoming the Joker, you know, before Batman became Batman, he he had turned, you know, Red Hood, the leader of the Red Hood gang, into the Joker. I don't know, but that's my kooky theory. Uh, otherwise, I can't think why it would continue into 2013, but, but we'll find out. Uh, the second, we also get a second story in here, a backup story, uh, which is set um, five years ago. It's called Tomorrow. It's written by James Tinian IV, with art by Andy Clark. And I really like this book, this story. Um, it sort of follows, we follow Jason Todd, Tim Drake, and uh, Dick Grayson. And we see, and Barbara Gordon, and we, and we get to see what the, these members of the Bat family were doing five years ago. Um, I really enjoyed this story. I especially enjoyed how Tim Drake was written. I think this is the best Tim Drake's been written in the new 52. And I'm really hoping that maybe they they would consider in january they're bound to do a way four in january and i really would love to see a red robin book written by james tinney in the fourth because i just loved how he wrote tim drake in this book and i think a book a red robin book by him would be brilliant but yeah all in all i just enjoyed both stories um <coughs> hints of the future hints of the past um and it was a really really good book and yeah i Again, I don't know if it's a kind of book you could read before issue one. I suppose you could because it's the past, but it doesn't really you know, just tell you a story, but it's more pushing the story forward for the future. Uh, but yeah, I still enjoyed it, loved this book, was, and definitely was my pick of the week, and definite thumbs up. Next up was a book I went back for, and that was Demon Knights, issue zero, written by Paul Canal, art by Bernard Chang. <coughs> um, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, we get to see the origin of Etrigan and the Demon and Jason Blood and how and why they were joined. Um, I really enjoyed this because, you know, the journey that they go on, um, the Etrigan and Jason Blood characters, there's a very similar journey that they go on and there are similarities between the two before they are joined together. Um, I really enjoyed this book and it reminded me why I was originally picking up this book and why I enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, so... A definite thumbs up and definite worth checking out. The art by Chang as well is, is just gorgeous. I just really enjoyed the art by Chang, you know. There's some really, really nice art in here. Um, Yeah, there is some really nice stuff in here. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can find another double page. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. Um, uh, uh, but, yeah, a really good book. really enjoyed it. Um, it's worth giving a go. It's a real nice taster. Into if, if you enjoyed this book, you'll enjoy Demon Knights. Uh, and I give it a, a thumbs up. Um, in fact, I enjoyed that book so much that I went back to my comic book shop Saturday and bought two more comics. The first of which was Demon Knights, issue 11, um, written by Paul Canal with art by Diogen, Diogen Neves. Um, this book was brilliant. I, um, 
it, it sort of starts off and all the members of the Demon Knights because in the regular book Demon Knights are kind of like a superhero team but it's set in like medieval times so that all the team have been turned into monsters uh, basically except for Madame Xanadu uh, readers of Justice League Dark will recognise that name she's the character in that book <coughs> we get to see it in here as well um, we, then um, this one speaks, this one monster speaks to her and he takes him to this cave and it turns out this one monster is King Arthur and he's been turned into a monster as well and he uses this water that purifies them and turns them back into their original characters. Um, we then find out that Madame Xanadu is in fact King Arthur's sister and she's one of the Fae um, and she's King Arthur's sister. So. Uh, that they, we then get to see how King Arthur has come back from Avalon, come back from the dead from Avalon, um, and how um, this 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 tower that is projected this energy that averts people into monsters. So they go to the tower, and at the end you get the big cliffhanger of who is behind the tower. Um, I enjoyed this; it was a really good read. There's some really good scenes. Um, Some really imaginative stuff. The banter back was a fourth is really good. The story is very fast moving. Um, so much happened in this story. Um, it's brilliant. This is one of my favourite pages of the book. You can see it there. Uh, Etric and the Demon and King Arthur. Uh, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this book and it made me think, why did I ever stop reading it? It was really good and I'd give it a thumbs up. Um, I enjoyed it again. I, I went. I got two books when I went back, and the second one, um, my comic book shop, they had Demon Knights issue 12 still in, and you would get the cliffhanger was it, it was Mo Morgan Le Fay who built this tower, the sister of King Arthur and Madame Xanadu, uh, and she's been using the dark magics so, and it sort of really had a bad effect on her body and worn away and eaten away her body, so she needs a new body to transport a, a soul and a consciousness to a new body, and that's what she turning all these people to monsters for to, to draw on the energy and uh, so she captures the demon knights and she's going to use Merlin's body because Merlin died and but she's got the, the demon knights had his body uh, why they were carrying his body around I don't know um, but they had his body so she's going to put herself inside his body so to the world the world will think she's Merlin but inside she'll be Morgan Le Fay and she feels she could do so much good like that uh, but of course the demon knights can't allow this to go on uh, but how are they going to get uh, escape and stuff it? Um, it's a really good issue I really enjoyed it there's some some great art inside again it's Dio Nieves on the art uh, Paul Canal's writing again is it, it, brilliant and yeah I just really enjoyed this book <coughs> um, my one slight gripe I think um, though all the characters are there you don't they don't all really get their moments but maybe in other issues they do um but i still really enjoyed this i think i'm definitely going to start picking this book up again and i would give it a thumbs up and i'm definitely going to start picking it up um so that that's my kind book review for this week um i will be back um with my most recent review later today hopefully uh thanks once again for watching uh, if you enjoy this video, click the subscribe button up there and onto your feed every week when I put a new video up, it will go straight onto your feed so you can see I've done a new video. Uh, if you liked it or disliked it down there, you've got a thumbs up and a thumbs down, please feel free to click them. Once again, really thank you, thank you for watching it, watching this video. Um, I just really enjoy doing these videos and it's it's great to think that people watch them and maybe enjoy, the, enjoy hearing me waffle on about comics too. Uh, so really, thank you for watching and... Have a good week. Bye for now.